Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you for the power of your spirit that is available here. We thank you for a brand new month, the month of March. Thank you for the explicit explosions of your grace we have experienced this year. Thank you because everyone is marching forward in this march. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be supernatural impartation of faith to do the impossible. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak of everyone in this service, things you have not achieved before, this match you will achieve them. Things that you could not do before, this match you will do them. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you Heavenly Father, in Jesus mighty name we pray, Amen. Please you may have your seats. Glory to God. I just have a couple of announcements, couple of announcements before I go ahead and um, you know do this. First of all, welcome to March. Um, so the well, I don't know if you were here yesterday, but we had an extremely successful um, entrepreneur from yesterday. This is the is it the third or the fourth? This is the fourth. But it was, um, someone said, Pastor, can we do this every year? I said, we do it every year. I said, Pastor, no, 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 no. We, we, we didn't do it every year. We started this year. I said, well, it's successful. We had participation in four centers. We had about maybe 2,000 people watching online. Um, um, physically, we had between four or 5,000 people that attended. But more than that, it was the impact. It was the impact. It was the, it was the impact um, from everyone that attended. It was, I've gotten feedbacks and I want to say, where's Dam Larry? Where's Dam Larry? Where, where's he? Where? Oh, right in front of me. Everybody, when you go out, look at this guy. I'm not sure if he wants to shake you though, because of uh, keep standing, keep standing, keep standing. Look at this guy. And this is the project coordinator. And literally, 80% of that job, 70 to 80% of most of the strategy job was done by him. Dam Larry, thank you. You are a gift to me, you are a gift to our church. All of the centers, that's Damilari. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So now, like I told you in the, in the conference, the Entrepreneurs Forum is for inspiration and challenge and some equipping. But if you really need to want to be helped to start a business, grow a business, what you have to focus, we have smaller programs. So there are two things. A website to be up very soon. There's a podcast that already that's going to come up in the next two weeks. You can subscribe to the pod podcast. But also the website is going to be up has resources but there's a school there's a class you can attend which is the basic entrepreneurial course um just to let you know i think as of yesterday in lecky alone they had about 20 people registered i don't know if i've registered here so far and um, it's a paid course also why is it paid because if you're serious about it, it um the way it even works it doesn't hold in church so what do you gain from it so if you if you're an enthusiast is for you enthusiasts are those i want to start up if you're you know what you just want to know one of your startup business for you what do you gain you get mentoring which is huge you gain a funding pathway so some of you need funds there's a pathway from that place that can help you get some money to start your business so it's not that it's a pathway the third one is this there's platform and opportunity so in the class through the teachers you can do something someone else needs and you can start something and the fourth thing is that there's partnerships you can see a lot of the banks are really wanting to work with us right now banks and you know i had a lot of people talk to me call me we want to work with you and the way it works is this, once they know that you are with us, the process to get funding from them will be quite easier because they, they think that we've done something. They trust us, so that trust extends to you. So that's something you must do. I think the registration is 25,000, I, I don't know. They, they, they're going to they're gonna work it out here. They're going to work it out, that kind of thing. Amen. Amen. So, so, so I don't know if, I think the bed is already closed, so everybody's like late birds right now. <laughs> So the next, uh, the next thing is, oh, this is, um, yeah, th this is the next thing. So from next Sunday, we're having a very special camp, a very special campaign. So last month I talked about faith. This month I'm talking about faith. Next month I'm talking about faith. Glory to God. And someone says, why are you doing this? It's just very simple. Because in the midst of all the attack coming, I don't know, I'm not even remember my 
February, the first Sunday in February, you watched, you, I'm sure you watched it live, you know, the first Sunday in February. I said in that message, I said, the Lord inspired me that I should tell everyone in our church for the next few seasons to begin to speak Psalm 91 over yourself. I want to remember that. And when this broke out, God says, I told you to prepare them by speaking Psalm 91 over themselves. You know, and that's why we're speaking faith because it's not something just coming against health. There are things coming against different kind of things. There's economic, there's all of this. Because once there's coronavirus, it slows down business. Because once China slows down, China owns a huge part of the world economy. Everything slows down. But we're saying that when men say there's a casting down, we are saying what? There's a lifting up. So we have, we're launching for next week 40 days of impossible testimonies. Yeah. 40 days of impossible. So what is it? Number one, it is 40 days in which testimonies are going to be had or will have started. Some people, it will happen in 40 days. Some people will start. And what do we expect? It's 40 days where you're going to set all the goals for 2020. Those stretching, we're going to set it. And we're going to see God do it. So what we want to do is that all this teaching, we want to focus it on the 40 days. And the first thing that will happen is this. There will be spiritual growth. There will be most of you growth because what will happen is, so let me tell you, so like, ah, it's different from 21 days of research. It's very different, you know, it's very different because, this is how it's different. It's very different because why research focus on your spiritual growth? This is focus on faith and you having a practical testimony. Either it's you don't have a child, either you need funding, either you, you know, you can get pregnant, whatever it is. Either you want your business to scale to 100 million in a month, whatever it is. Well, this 40 days, we're going to challenge you to believe for the impossible. And as you do that, something huge will happen to you in Jesus' name. So, so it's 40 days of impossible testimonies, and at some period of it, we're going to challenge ourselves to radical generosity. So what's the difference? Why research is done a lot through the church, the 40 days of impossible testimony will be done a lot through small groups. You need to find a group to join. Someone says, why? Because we want to have a testimony, the key thing is this. There are prayers we want to pray every day. There are confessions we want to do every day. But the, the, the last one is difficult. We want everybody to take one step towards your goal. That step, eh, is where the problem is. Because I'm confessing for capital. My brother, you need someone that can be like, what did you do this week? To what, what you confess? Because the Bible says, faith without works is what is dead. So, everybody's going to get into a small group. Don't, and let me tell you something. It's, it's so easy. You're going to get into a small group. They'll hold you accountable. If you're not in a small group, you can start a small group with some training. And we'll just, so by next week, we're going to get some information. All our cell leaders and other church pastors, I, I need kind of late. You're going to get some information on how we're going to you know, move this thing forward because a lot depends on you people to get it forward. I want to just prepare your heart for that. All right. So this morning, I want to talk to you about how to have results that defy logic. How to have results that defy logic. How to have results that defy logic. Before I do that, let me just take a moment and we're going to stand on our feet one more time and recite Psalm 91 as I speak the blessing of protection over you. Will you stand? Let's do that. Say with me, I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I abide under the shadow, under the, shadow of the Almighty. I say of the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. My God in whom I will trust. Surely he has delivered me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He has covered me with his feathers and under his wings do I trust. His truth is my shield and my buckler. Therefore, I will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that fly by the day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at my right hand side. It shall not come near me. It shall not come near me. It shall not come near me. There will be nobody in my family that will be connected to this virus outspread. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, only with my eyes will I behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because I have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, my habitation. 
There shall no evil before me. 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 In the name of Jesus, I declare with faith in my spirit, there shall no evil before me. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift up your two hands towards heaven, say in the name of Jesus, with absolute faith in the power of the Holy Spirit, I declare no plague, no epidemic shall come near my dwelling place. I declare like the Israelites, when the angel of death came, he says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. I declare the blood is upon me, the blood is upon my household, he's upon my wife, he's upon my husband, upon my children, upon my nannies, upon my partners. When evil and death comes, he will pass over. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am righteous. Only the sound of rejoicing will be heard in my house. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Can I have your seat? Hallelujah. And listen, this is what I said to you first Sunday of this month. I want you to keep doing what? Saying it. I want you to keep saying it. Do you know why? Faith coming by what? And hearing by what? Because as soon as you go out here now, you can hear more bad news. All of a sudden, coronavirus is the most Google topic on social media. I mean, you have to find out the right information. I'm not saying that. But sometimes, the facts you need erodes the fits that you have. Oh, you didn't get that. Sometimes, the facts that you need erodes the faith that you have. So there's a tension of hearing facts and staying in faith. It was what Peter saw that Mickey began to say. The storm was not bigger, only that the storm got his attention. All of a sudden, he began to sing. But he needed to look at the storm because it was walking on water. But how do you watch storm and not allow them get inside? Glory to God. All right, are you, are you ready for the word of God this morning? Oh my God, you will be so blessed this morning. Just to warn you, just to warn you, you will be so blessed. I love you watching from all of the centers. You will be so blessed in all of your centers. Amazing work with it. Let's turn our Bible to Psalm 78, verse 41. So, how to have results that defy logic? Psalm 78, verse 41. Psalm 78, verse 41. Psalm 78, verse 41. So, the first thing is this logic is a method of reasoning or argument. So, when you say someone is logical or it's, it's, a, it's a method, when, for example, um, when someone does something you don't understand, you'll be like, what's the logic behind this? That means, what is the, what is the like, thinking behind it? It's, it's something that is understandable. Because I want to help you understand how to produce results that defile logic. Logic is a, system of prince, is a system of principles of reasoning applicable to any, any branch of knowledge. So any branch of knowledge, medicine is a logic on its own. Um, engineering is a logic of its own. So why are we talking about this? So logic means something, um, maybe I should say it this way. Logic means something that would make sense. For example, let me say what would make sense to you. What would make sense is this, that um, if you don't have money to start a business, you go and borrow. That would make sense. That, so someone says, where do you want your funding for? I'm just going to borrow. What would not make sense is this, when you say, where do you want your funding for? I'm just expecting that supernaturally God will supply me the money. That's, that doesn't make sense. Logic sometimes looks stupid or looks insane. Looks crazy. That's another great word. So when people are not logical, it becomes crazy. Let me give an example. If I wear a, a suit, wear a shirt, and I wear a, um, a native trouser, what we will call in Nigeria, um, what do you call this thing? Shokoto. That's a Yoruba word, Shokoto. you be like, and I wear a canvas. you be like, that's not logical because that arrangement doesn't make sense. So when people are not logical, we begin to say they're crazy. So what I say, producing the result that defies logic, I'm saying producing the result that people think is crazy. What is crazy? Naturally, as a human being, I should not expect this. Naturally, as a human being, there's no reason why a rational human being should be thinking this way. When you hear a lady got married at 55, that is illogical. That is crazy. 
That is insane. What we know, that is insane. When you hear the fact that someone in Harvesters, beginning of the year, he was squatting somewhere in Bariga. By December, the guy has a company that employs 100 people, has done 8.4 billion era as a year turnover. That is crazy because how does that happen in 12 months? So when I'm talking about logical, I'm not saying this. These are not the things you believe for naturally. These are the things that, my God, they push you to the extreme. How do you explain that the lady that, you know, used to be on the benevolence list and we used to give her, you know, 100,000 every other quarter to sustain her life is now the lady that is now one of the richest ladies in our industry, cosmetology in the whole of Nigeria. And that happens with the yes space. That's crazy. And someone says, Pastor, what are you saying exactly? Let me tell you something. He said, all the things you are saying are ridiculous. Don't tell me what is impossible. You are not the God I serve. Before you tell me what is impossible, listen, you are not the God I serve. You are not the God I pray to. You are never the God that created me. How dare you define to me what is possible or not impossible? And by the way, just for you to know, Ephesians 3 says unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly far beyond what I can ask or think. He says if you can ask it, God can do it. He says if you can think it, God can do it. He says if it's superior or higher than what you can ask or think, he said God can still do it. I know the doctor says you can't have a child because there's a low sperm count. I know the doctor says you can't have a child because there's something wrong with your womb. I know the doctor says you can't have a child because of an hormonal in defect. But guess what? Even with hormonal defect, my God gives people children. If you don't know what you're thinking, ask Sarah. If you're still confused, ask Elizabeth. If you're still doubting, ask Anna. We have an array of people that men says it's over. Men says it's impossible. Men says it can be done. But when God steps into it, he changes the story all the time. Yesterday evening in the entrepreneurs forum, Herbert, Group Managing Director of Access Banks shared. He said, when we lost everything, he said, we could not even sleep. He said, what my partner did was he took the Bible, hugged it at night. He said, that was the only way we could sleep. Many of you didn't understand what I was saying. Rest only comes by knowing that you are enveloped in God's love and trust. Many of you, the rest you're looking for it's not in the way you're looking for it. It's in God. Psalm 78 verse 41. The Bible says this. Yes, they turned their back and tempted God. And look at the next word. And they limited. That's what I was saying. They limited the Holy One of Israel. My goodness. Is that what I think? I thought God can do all what he does. Most times when people say they are waiting on God, most times it's people that are limiting God. How do I know that? When Moses saw the Red Sea, Moses said, Lord, what should I do? God looked at Moses. He said, go forward. Like, why are you waiting for me? God doesn't, God doesn't say, oh, thank you for asking me that question. Now, this is your next thing. No, God says, go forward. Listen to me. Many of you, God wants you to go forward. That business needs to go to the next level. You know, I, I saw someone yesterday, one of the coordinators, Pastor Malaji, the truth is that when you start talking about things like this, I didn't believe it to work out this way. He said, I'm a businessman, but what this has done for me is this. If what I thought was impossible because of all the things that were involved and the time space we had eventually became a possibility as a businessman, I'm going back to work on Monday and I'm going to tell my people all those goals we say it's impossible, they can become possible. And that's how you use your faith to inspire people. The reason I'm saying so is this. The world will not bow down to all the things you do, but when they see how your faith in God produces results, you will get their attention. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And how does this start? The Bible says they limited the Holy One of Israel. How do you limit that? How do you limit the Holy One of Israel? God is talking about billions, you keep talking about millions. God is talking about millions, you keep talking about thousands. God is talking about you growing, you know, you growing that business to international offices in Singapore, in, in Sydney, in New York, in London, and you're saying, how can I get to, how can I get to VI? And the reason why you keep saying that is it because, I understand why you say that, because you look at yourself and be like, who am I? Who do I know? Where do I come from? To begin to think this way. But let me tell you something. All you need to succeed in life and to care about is what God says about you. 
And what does God say about you? You're a global champion. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Features of logical result. Three features of logical result. Number one, when is the logical result? It makes sense. Primary one to primary two. Banking officer to senior banking officer. From senior banking officer to what next now? Uh, assistant manager, just, just one step at a time, five years on each role, if possible, sometimes quicker. That, that makes sense. <laughs> when, it, when is the logical result? What, 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 what does it mean? It, it's, it's, it's easy to understand. It's easy to follow. It's easy to follow that you from a one-bedroom house to a two-bedroom house. That's easy to follow. It's to understand that, you know, you start a business and for the first one year you struggle. That's easy to follow. See, we don't even expect some kind of breakthrough. We don't even expect that someone that is 24 should be having a business that is producing billions. We don't even expect that. That's difficult to follow. It's easy to follow. So I'm just defining what logical is so that when I say we're believing for in logical results, you can know what we're believing God for exactly. Glory to God. It's easy to get a contract somewhere that you know somebody. It's easy to get a job somewhere that your uncle is an MD. But when it's a job that's international and they're paying and people are vowing from the position from all over Africa and Europe and North America and they zoom in and say, we've just picked 10 people and you're amongst them and you're all your other, why you went to University of Lagos, which is a great school, by the way, all your other friends went to Harvard, all your other friends went to Yale, all the other people on the panel went to, you know, they went to Imperial College London and you are the only one from, <laughs> why did they go to University of Lagos? Say, Where is that on the map? And you're wondering, how did I, how is that even that illogical? Oh, glory to God. Every Christian has the inbuilt capacity to produce results that will outstand the world. John 3 verse 8. The Bible says that you see the wind where it blows and you do not know what it is. It says, so is the one that is born of God. We see the effect. We can't tell what does it. Every child of God has the inbuilt power to produce things that will shock people. You are designed to shock your world. John 3 verse 8. It says, the wind blows where it leases. You hear the sound thereof, but cannot tell what it's coming from. And with it go. It says, so is what everyone that is born of the Spirit. Are you born of the Spirit? Your result of success should not be explainable. People should be saying things like, mm, we get it. But... There's something that is missing. I said that's the God factor. That, that, that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That he makes me lie down in green pastures. That he's the one that prepares the table for me. He anoints my head and my cup run it over. Second Kings chapter 4. Chapter 7. This, this is going to bless you. This story. How to produce results that what? Mm. Second Kings chapter 4. Chapter 7 rather. Verse 1. I'm going to read a little because of my time, but I guess you know the story. Before this time there was famine. There was famine in Israel. There was famine in Israel. And Elijah said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Pass ye the Lord. Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. So let me give an example. Let me use because all those shekels are it's difficult to understand. Let's say things really get tough in Nigeria and the bag of rice becomes like a hundred thousand naira. That expensive. So Elijah comes tomorrow, and I, I want to show you the message translation of this actually. Elijah comes the next day and says, Hey, Elijah says, God says by this time tomorrow, because things have been so tough that bag of rice is hundred thousand naira, by this time tomorrow, a bag of rice is going to cost five thousand naira. Someone says, That's crazy. Even when there was no recession, a bag of rice was costing 18,000 naira. Recession took you up to 100,000 naira. And you now come, and you, this is just a pastor. You don't know economics. You don't know the government. You don't know anybody. You just come and say something. Because when we speak like this, someone says, Pastor, are you aware of the economic implications of what you're saying? Have you seen the, have you seen the forecast by Goldman Sachs for Nigeria for 2020? Have you seen the prediction of what, what bank in our economic growth? Do you understand the implications of the fact that China and America are fighting? Do you understand that this virus can become an epidemic that will spread around the whole place and will hurt the economy? Listen to me. My job as a pastor is to speak to you what God says. And your job is to believe it. The Bible says this. Oh, glory to God. It says, tomorrow about this time shall a measure of flour be sold for a shekel. 
and two measures of barley, but for a shekel in the gates of Samaria. Then a lord on whom's hand the king leaned. This is a very intelligent man. When he said leaned, I mean he can be leaned physically, but it could also mean this is one of the most intelligent people in the king's cabinet. So this is a person that the king trusts. So leans on him mentally. So this guy is respected. This guy has position. This guy has influence. He's the minister of economic affairs. The minister of it, he stood up and said something powerful and says, and answered the man of God and said, Behold, even if the Lord will make windows in heaven, how might these things be? He was not asking a question. He was challenging a prophecy. Ooh. Elijah said, Ooh. Oh, I wish you didn't say that. Oh, I wish you didn't challenge the prophecy. He said, why? Because the way prophecy works, if you don't believe it, you cannot, con you cannot experience it. The way prophecy works, if you don't believe it, you cannot experience it. Why? Your mind is very critical to the fulfillment of God's will in your life. Once your mind cannot contain that God can do something, that thing will elude you. And guess what? When that miracle happened, because it did happen, how did it happen? Four leopards, four nobodies, leopards despised, just were hungry. And the four leopards said, if we stay here, we're going to die. Let's go to the Syrians. I want to attack, I want to attack you know, the, the camp of the Syrians. If they will kill us, let them kill us, because we're already dead with our food already. We're leopards, so let them kill us. But if they don't kill us, at least we'll stay alive. They took a risk. So when they got there, they found out that the camp of the Syria, the whole Syrian camp, was empty. And they left it as it was. Left their food. And you know, people, when people are going to war, they stock up. Then they began to eat. Then he caught one of them and said, hey, if we eat this alone, it's not a good thing. And, and that's why many of you that hear this kind of word and come to church by yourself, it's not a good thing. You hear this thing that is helping you succeed, it's helping you change your mind, it's changing your life, and you, you come to church by yourself. It's not a good thing. You have to find someone and say, I know my church will help you. You need to come for five months and see what will happen to you. So they went and told the king. The king went, and eventually, what had happened was that the Bible says, God made the Syrian to hear a noise. There was no noise, but God made them to hear a noise. I'm telling you how powerful your God is. Like, like people hear things that people are not saying. Praise God. God made them to hear a noise. <laughs> Glory to God. You walk past, and someone says, did you, did you, did you ask for a job? He said, no, no, no. But if you're sensitive, like, why? Oh, don't, don't answer. Just say, why did you say that? Because I heard that you asked for a job. He said, oh, yeah, I actually want to change my job. Let me tell you something. One testimony in this church. One time on a, on a midweek service, if you don't call it a midweek service, I feel very bad for you. I, I was just praying, and the Holy Ghost said, those that don't have job, can you stand to your feet? I said, hey, people. Holy Ghost said, eh? those that don't have job, stand on your feet. I said, should I pray? He said, don't pray. Just sing. Sing what? Glorify your name in all the earth. Through the simple, glorify your name. And that was it. We sang. And we sat down. And the next day, one of them got a call and says, Hey, you applied in this place and passed the first interview. Will you come for the next one? He had the name of the company. He knew he never applied there. He knew he had never done a first interview before. The thing was to now go for the next one. Since you didn't go for the first one, how do you go for the next one? So he called back the number so that when it goes to the exchange, it will hear the proper name of the company, now be able to Google for where the address is. And that was exactly what he did. And he went for the next interview and went for the next one and got that job. Someone says, who did the first interview? That's a question we we'll have to ask Jesus in heaven. It could be an angel, I do not know. It could be the fact that someone's name was moved up and about for him, I do not know. But that's what our God does. Because you'll be looking everywhere for someone to help you get a job. It's time to look up to heaven. You'll be looking everywhere for someone to help you raise money. It's time to look up to heaven. If you've been piling everybody to get a promotion. What you don't realize is this promotion coming up from the east, from the west, from the north. It comes from God. It's time to look to heaven. Somebody say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Listen to me. Do you have the message translation of this verse? Can you put on the screen? Yeah, you have it. You have it. I want to show you. The Bible says, 
No, no, no. Verse 1. Verse 1. I, I, I can, you can go home. That's your Bible study for today. Go home. Uh, let me just tell you a secret. Everything you want, should I say a secret of, of what I do? Every time I want a miracle in my life, I begin to read the Bible of people that had that kind of miracle. Why? Faith coming by hearing and hearing that word. If you do that, you will see an explosion. Because there are so many things to say, but I'm watching my time. Will you receive this? Oh my God, help me. Mm. I was reading about finances, how people got finances for projects. Because a lot of you came here because you want that prayer, but you need to wish them also. What I discovered from the Bible was this. When it came to finances, finances was connected to people. Elijah, there was a woman, there was a widow. Jesus, there was a young boy that had a lunch. He did an animal, there was someone that had an animal somewhere. What does that mean? God says, the way I will help you finance it is to bring people into your lives. Most people are not aware of it and they lose the opportunity. That's why the Bible says, entertain strangers unaware. It, it's entertain them. Like, be nice. They say, go to say, you're not know, good. It's fine. It's fine. When your finance is waiting for you in the cell, but you're looking for it in VI, keep looking. Let me tell you something, eh? Everything God has given you may not be in your hands, but it's within your reach. You know what I'm saying this to you? What you should ask yourself is this. Am I maximizing my reach? Before you start traveling, something, I'm looking for my husband on Facebook. It's good to find your husband on Facebook. Some of you find your husband on Instagram. That's fine. But the reach where you are, local church, all the opportunity to meet people there, have you found it? That is why you're now putting half-naked pictures on this Instagram, hoping that someone will find you. And sometimes this scammer will scam you, will take your body, because what you sell will body. So they will call for body in the name of marriage, take your body and go away. God puts it in your reach, not in your hands. So yeah, I tell you, oh, there's a singles ministry, I don't like it. That's right. You will find that one somewhere. When you're in a place, see what the Bible says. The Bible says, we are like a tree planted by what? What does that mean? Everything needed for us to go is around us. The point is this, you don't take advantage of what's around you. You look down on it. It's in your family. It's in your church. If you belong to a cell, it's there. If you belong to the family, it's there. Some of you have my type problem. The solution is here, but you don't want to open up. See what the Bible says. Elisha said, listen, God's word. And when God sends you a prophet, prophet don't say what is happening. They say what will happen. The famine is over. I thought someone would say amen. amen. You didn't hear that. I said, the famine is over. Amen. The funding problem is over. Amen. The stagnation is over. Amen. He said, by this time tomorrow, food will be plenty, a handful of a meal for a shekel, two hands full for a grain for a shekel. The market at the city gate will be bustling. Hallelujah. Can I speak to just a hundred business people here? Hallelujah. By this end of March, there will be balls in your business. There will be balls in your career. Everything you do will begin to explode in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Someone says, what are illogical things? Illogical things is when you need wine and God sends you water, but water turns to wine. Ooh. I, I, listen, there was no wine in their rich, but there was water in their rich. But Jesus knew that God puts things in my rich because he has a capacity to turn to what I want. The problem is not that Wine is missing. You do not know what you have. You look down on what you have. You don't take care of what you have. You don't understand that water can turn to wine. That's illogical because naturally when I want wine, you don't bring me water. Illogical is water. See, ain't, that's why I need to say to you, sometimes when you walk in faith, faith is crazy. Oh my God. See, it was amazing because I can think of what Peter said. Is it Peter, Peter's, um, Jesus' mom says they want wine. Peter said, that's, um, Joseph said, that's fine. Go get water. You know the water they got? Water that they used to wash themselves. That's not the cleanest of the waters in the world. Bitchum water. 
and Peter bought it. And behind Peter was Thomas because they were having a conversation. This guy is crazy. And you know the amazing thing? Can, can you, let me tell you, I respect the apostles a whole lot. But because that was the first miracle he did, they had never seen miracles that Jesus Christ did, but they were willing to act. My God. You know Jesus as a miracle worker. They had never seen one miracle because this was the first miracle. I said, faith can be insane. Listen, if you don't do some insane things, you are not in faith. If you, are, if you don't take some risk, you are not in faith. If you are praying safe, you are not in faith. Peter, Peter Thomas was like, Thomas, Jesus said we should bring water. He said, well, you know he's a good Bible teacher. Let's see if he wants to teach from this water. He said, just tell him. He said, he said bring water. He said, go and serve it today. Go and serve it from the high table. He said, <laughs> Thomas looked at Jesus, Peter and said, P? Go, 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 go. go. <laughs> Peter said, Jay, I'm a married man. I should not act stupidly because my wife and children I will hear about this. Next thing, Peter looked at John. He said, John, you're a young girl. You always love him, eh? Go. John took, went to get the master of the field. Master of the field. He said, this tastes so nice. John said, mm-hmm. 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 This, he said, this tastes so nice. Let me tell you something. If God tells you to do something, it may seem illogical, do it. Let me, as we talk about water, let me move you to talk about something else. Noah. I love Noah because Noah is something all of you do. God taught Noah to build an ark. Many of you, God is asking to build an IT company. God is asking to build something nobody has ever done before. When God taught Noah to build an ark, remember this, that it had never rained before. So Noah had not seen two things that were important for, what, for his design. He had not seen but rain, neither had this seen an ark, but it was told to build an ark. How do you build a solution for a problem that nobody never existed before? How do you build a solution for a problem that never existed before? That is what faith does. That's why sometimes it seems that faith people are insane. That's why sometimes it seems faith people are crazy. But listen to me, we act out on people. Listen to me. What is insane faith in a season become testimony in that season? Oh, you didn't get it. What is crazy faith in a season becomes a testimony in another season? Why am I saying this to you? Watch this now. Watch this now. Because by the time you do what God has said, just like when they served the water, when they were serving the water, it was insane. When they were serving the water, it was stupid. I could imagine that all the apostles' friends were like, hey, it's time to go before they start beating someone here. You know, I could imagine that all, all Mary's friends said, it's time to go. But when the water tasted nice, they said, wow. All of a sudden, Peter said, I knew it. Oh, shara, gara, gara, gara. John said, oh, shut up. You know, John said, chairman, it's not, it's not them, it's us. we disciples. Yes, we disciples. Because when you are walking in faith, it's insane. But after that period of insane, it's the period people say, your God is alive. It's the period people say, this is a testimony. It's the period people say, I admire you. That's why faith people, be careful when you walk with them. Because they keep saying things that are crazy. Hallelujah. Can I help you today? Our lucky church. We're trying to buy from the owner. I said, no, I'm not going to sell to you. I said, I found if I get out of my facility. We push for an extension. All of a sudden. All we knew was this. The earth is the Lord. 
and the fullness thereof. That's all we need. As I speak to you, in here, the draft to pay for the lucky property. Yeah. Listen, our lease expires towards the end of the year. We are so serious. We are so serious and ahead of things. Next week, which is about our Tuesday, we meant to have done this on Thursday, but we had legal changes we had to make. Next week, we're going to bring a first draft of, about, I think, maybe 25 or 30 percent and say, to show what's serious, this is it. How do you do that? By faith. See, and Tony is being constructed. We are doing lucky, starting at Jar Church by faith. It's crazy, people. You are in a crazy church. What should define our church is not the clothes you wear to church. What should define our church is our faith. You say, I belong to a church that has insane faith. I belong to a church where the blind see. I belong to a church where the lame walk. I belong to a church where people that have no room can get pregnant, get pregnant. I belong to a church where the sick are healed. I belong to a church where poor people become millionaires and billionaires. Why should it not happen for me? Should I, should I help you some more? Last year, God spoke to me. He said, can we start... They are, can we begin to plan for their job church? I said, yeah. He said, start a midweek service center. I said, yeah, we can do that. He said, send this person there. Oh, wow, we, we can do that. They had, and if you know something about church, November and December, church attendance goes, Shh, because everybody get busy. They had the third or the second service in December. Pastor Benga sent me a message. He said, Pastor, today, which was like maybe a night of worship or car or something, he said, today I think we're about two about 250, I'm not sure if I've read, about 250. I said, huh? Do you know the traffic coming from VI to Aja? And yet, there were 250 people that were able to come to a three-week-old church. <laughs> See, that is what faith means. Faith means that I have no reason to do this. It doesn't make sense. But I'm willing to step out and do it because this is the key. A logical result is a corresponding result. Sorry, a logical result is a corresponding output to a logical thinking that is based on faith. It doesn't make sense, but it's based on faith. God I said, um, why not do something in Antony? I said, yeah, we will do that. So November, we started Antony. By Sunday Wine Press, Antony Church and the Fifths I done 2,000, about 2,000 on a Sunday morning. What's the bit in 2,000? Remember, our church, it took us about 10 years to get to the first 2,000. And they, in less than, my God is in this place, people. And, and you know, when, when we're thinking of buying the lucky property, some people say, oh, the lucky property, maybe we're going to take a loan. I said, no, we're going to buy this cash. No loan. I said, no, no, no. I said, God is going to bless people, raise up people. And when I was saying, someone came to me, I said, Pastor, you said cash? I'll give the first 10 million. See, you never know what God has in store until you step out in faith. And let me tell you something. People are going to give the first 100 million, give the first 50 million. Some people are going to give as small as 10,000. But everyone, and, and that's why when people say, see, that's the same thing with tithing. See, when we're tight, it is no, it's stupid. Only stupid, crazy, insane, fit people type. Because how can I get a hundred thousand and I want more money and I take 10% out of it and I say, Lord, receive 10%. That is crazy. But faith says, there's he that giveth out and yet increaseth. Faith says, give. And it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed out, shake it together, running over, shall men give to your bosom. He said, Pastor, you don't say, I have rent. That's what I'm saying. I understand why you don't give, but does God understand it? That's it to you and him. But every month with that, we go, this is it. No, last year, one of our toughest years as we're, as, as we're trying to build Anthony, 
There's a church close by, very close here, five minutes. I went to the church. I saw they were building. I came back. I said, I, I told our executive pastor, Pastor Dio, on the mainland church, back at that church. I said, let's write a check of one million and give to that church. We need, Pastor, we should be the one collecting offering. But the power of receiving is not in we holding back. It's in we what? Releasing. Then all of a sudden, one day came, one lady came to, one lady that, you know, just she came and said, can I see what's going on, Anthony? We took her around it. And she said, I'm so impressed. But I don't like this. I don't like that. I said, why have you not done this and that? I said, because um, money. And she sent how much the next day? I, I can't remember. She, she sent a house help. They didn't even see me. I said, Pastor, one lady came and said the help, so she dropped this. I opened it, it was all dollars. And it was about $40,000. And she sent a message, Pastor, I'm so sorry it's so small. I was hoping I could fix everything. But take this first. And you think your God is not alive? And you think that your God cannot expand your business? I want to tell you something. If God can do this for physical buildings, does God care about buildings or people? I want to ask, because some churches emphasize building. We don't emphasize building. We, we, if God can do this for building, my God, what God wants to do with the Kedja, what God wants to do with, you know, with Lecky, what God wants to do with Antony, it's why sick. Oh my, this is my God. What God wants to do here is more significant. Should, should I tell you? See, I'm crazy. I, I wrote some things out. See, I've been crazy a long time. It's not just now. It, it's so bad that in my year three, my best friend, Jite, her former son name is Awinor, but she's now married to somebody else. She drew my head and said, do you know you are really... It, it was first Femi Akino. Femi Akino is a child accountant that works in, that works in um, Canada, lives in Canada. Femi wrote on my notes one day, said, do you know you are very crazy? He said, but crazy good. Then Jite drew my brain. He said that when I knew your brain was like this, wise, wise 90%, stupid 10%. He said, but now when you're four, your brain is like this, stupid 90%. Why is 10%? He said, because now you have all these things upside down. Should I show you some crazy things? Because when I see your goal, I can tell if you have the living God or not. When I see your goal, I can tell if you have logical results or not. And this coming midweek service, we're going to take to another level. Oh, glory to God. Let me, let me show you because, because I, I write down crazy things all the time. I write down crazy things all the time. And I write them down because, so that, you know, if you see my old notebooks, I wrote crazy, crazy things. All the crazy things we're seeing today. So I wrote here. I said, this will happen in 2020. I said, number one, where we'll be able to feed weekly 1,000 people as a church. We will give... <laughs> I said, we will give 100 people scholarship. I said, we're going to start an initiative called the Northern Initiative to help rebuild the northern Nigeria and we'll be able to raise 50 million for that initiative. Listen, when I told you that Entrepreneurs Forum will be the biggest, you didn't know like, oh, Entrepreneurs Forum. Did you notice something? All the seats were sold out. This place was still packed despite coronavirus. We said, coronavirus will not more than this. I said, watch it. Crazy faith. Insane faith. Because faith says there are limitations, we skip over it. There's funding problem, we skip over it. There's virus, we skip over it. Nothing stops us. Look at the next thing. This is very powerful. I said this. I said we're going to have 25 women in our church that are going to get pregnant, that have been time barren and impossible by doctors. I said 25. No, no matter how long it is, we're going to get pregnant this year. I said 200 and single, 250 single girls and guys are going to get married, especially the delays one. Girls, you can never imagine. So I said, how will I even get them married? I don't even know. Like, how will you get them married? I don't even know. But that's what I'm believing God for. Said, Pastor, I'm 37, but I'm marrying somebody right now. I've been single for this. <laughs> will you receive this? I'm believing that there'll be people that currently have between zero to 20,000 20, monthly income. That before this year is over, there'll be 1,000 of them that'll sign any 1.5 million per year. I I'm so crazy to believe that at least there'll be 400 people. <laughs> that will be earning 10 million naira 
annually. They used to do between one and two million annually. They are going to move to what? 10 million. I, I'm so crazy to believe that there will be 200 people here that are going to cross over 100 million dollar annual, annual income. Can you see the amen is dropping? Because I'm like, that's not me. <laughs> I'm not telling the craziest one. I believe that there will be 70 people here that are going to cross the 1 billion mark this year. Glory, glory to God. I'm, I'm telling you, I just believe that, you know, it's okay that you're shouting. It's okay that the nursing fathers and mothers don't shout. I mean, all they want is kids. They don't want breakthroughs. Keep sitting out the back. It's okay. It's okay. Keep sitting out the back. That's, that's all. You know, I, I'm believing. Oh, wow. Aja Church. Yaba Church. Abuja Church. Canada Church. <laughs> U.S. Church. London Church. How? By the power. See, I'm saying this when it happens. You see, he was so insane. He said so. Sundays in this church on 20, see, I'm even putting a day, 2020 Sundays. Oh, this Sunday we have 20,000 people. Praise God. Let's pray. Glory to God. You want to have results that defy logic? Two things are important. Number one, it is the thinking. Have thinking that defies logic. What's your thinking? Water can turn into wine. That's your thinking. Water can turn into I don't know what to do, but that water can turn into wine. Have other thinking that faith is the power that changes everything. Let's go ahead and thank and praise him, everybody. I don't know if you have all the 70 that are going to cross the 1 billion mark this year, but I want to hear you pray. I know if you're among the 100, the 200 that are going to cross the 100 million mark this year, I want to hear you say, Lord, that's my calling. That's my calling. That's my calling. That's my calling. We're scaling every barrier. Every barrier. We're scaling every barrier. We're scaling every barrier. This is the victory that overcomes the world. This our faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Oh, glory to God. And Father, have a little bit of hands. Everything that's blocked your mind, everything that's blocked your mind, and told you that some things are impossible, I declare that those mental patterns and mindset menos terenmandur mandongas will crumble in the name of Jesus I speak to this church family from today produce result that defies logic produce result that defies logic in the name of Jesus have testimony that shows your God is alive the Bible says you shall be multiplied. He says you will not be small. Overcome every obstacle. Every business explode. Every business begin to pause. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Heavenly Father. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. God bless you. you can have your seat. Let's go ahead and give God a big shout. Hey, it's a new season, people. Don't tell me what is impossible. You are not my God. Media put on the coat, send it out this morning. That's what I'm saying. Don't tell me what is impossible. You are not my God. He says, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Oh, glory to God. You know, I look at Anthony Project Pastor. I say, Pastor B, we need a lot of money for Anthony. I said, my God, we're going to do it. People are going to get angry and say, Pastor, me, 25 million. I said, whoa, you. Even 250, you used to struggle. He said, Pastor, that was in the past. My faith is strong. We're well, going to have people that never tightened in their life before or do once in the month. I say, Pastor, before I even pledge, my tight, I'm, I'm now insane. My giving, I used to give 1,000 there. I moved it to 5,000. I'm now insane. 
because I'm taking actions based on what God said. Praise God. I'm going to tell you something. What you don't know is this. A church to organize the biggest entrepreneurs gathering in Nigeria, it's a big win. A church. Do you know how many people have the money that can do it? A church. I don't know of any entrepreneurs program that's gathered close to four to 5,000 people in a garden before. I know the thing, the way we use the internet and the way from one center to another center, someone said, one of my brothers pastor, I've never seen that before in Nigeria, only on TV. Why? We're breaking boundaries. It's time for you to look at your business. Look at the boundary. I said, this boundary, not this year, this week. No. Because you have, see, faith is not in the future. Faith is not what? In the future. Hebrews 11, 1, put, put it. I want this on the screen. Put my picture and put it on the screen. I said, today's service. Hebrews 11, 1, put it there. I want to show you. Because someday, yes, I, I'm going to, I'm not planning. Hey! You have started again. Too much analysis into paralysis. Hebrews 11, 1, read. Enough. Now, faith. If it's not now, it's not faith. He said, now faith is. What is faith? Faith is now. Now faith is. What is faith? Faith is now. So that's one problem. As you go home now this week, that sales problem as you go, that staffing problem as you go, that location problem as you go, now you are coming back on Tuesday with testimony ready. Who am I talking to? This year, this year there's no there's no waste of time. Oh, is the year of visions and expansion? We are. After I say 40 days of impossible testimonies. Impossible testimonies. You hear testimonies? Oh. And it's starting with me. Oh, I thought you were not receiving. It's starting with me. Are you ready to give this morning?